Terence McNally's plays are a major contribution to the social history of AIDS. A third of a century after the onset of the epidemic, he has returned to the subject from a new perspective. Mothers and Sons, now playing in the Reb Studio series, is about the tension between honoring the memory of horrendous loss and moving on to a new appreciation of life. Cal Porter has moved on. Catherine Girard, the mother of Cal's dead partner, hasn't. We meet Cal and Catherine in his Upper West Side apartment. We learn gradually about their connection. Their disconnect is obvious from the start. I can't recall seeing a more uncomfortable, tension-filled conversation than the one between Cal and Catherine. It's all about avoiding what they have to say to each other. As Cal, Harry Boovey is desperately trying to break the ice, but the iciness of Derry Lawrence's Catherine is unbreakable for a while. The time is 2014, 20 years after AIDS took Catherine's son, Andre. The last time Cal and Catherine saw each other was at Andre's memorial. They can see where it took place in Central Park through Cal's window. Then as now, Catherine could not accept her son's gayness or his death. For quite a while, we don't know why Catherine has appeared out of the blue at Cal's door. Along the way to the truth, Cal's husband, Will, arrives home with the couple's son, Bud. Cal's new life is the hardest thing to understand for Catherine, who is mired in the past. Will recognizes Catherine as a threat, even though he doesn't know why she has come. The performances by Boovey, Lawrence, and Michael Keelun as Will are filled with truthfulness, intensity, and responsiveness to one another. I admire the way McNally has portrayed two men living in the new normal of same-sex unions. I think he may have tried to pack too much into the single character of Catherine, but where she ends up made sense to me thanks to Lawrence's persuasiveness, Simon Desolate's charm as Bud, and the pacing by director Michael Evan Haney. James Wilk's scenic design makes the most of corners in this staging in the round. Costume designer Elizabeth Eisloffel scores in giving Catherine a fur coat nearly the same color as her hair. John Wiley's lighting and Amanda Ware's sound enhance the atmosphere. I will need to see this play again to get a complete handle on Catherine's character, but I look forward to that. Yeah, it's a beautifully written, beautifully performed, but so much of the material in it I'm so familiar with and so little that was fresh to me. Well, I, I didn't feel quite that way, but I can understand why you did. <laughs>